Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week, I'm not joined by a guest, it's just a solo pod. So for anyone who's been listening to Genuine Chit Chat, especially over the last couple of weeks, um, you should know that I'm going to Mexico on holiday, because obviously I'm based in the UK. Um, So I'm going on holiday to Mexico uh, in a couple of days, and I'm going to be going for about 10 days. Um, So instead of stressing myself out and worrying about social media posts and making sure the episodes were edited before I go and etc, etc, I just thought it'd be nice to take a two-week break, because as any regular listeners will know, I do this Basically every week except Christmas, I'll normally leave a week out. Um, And I think last year I didn't do one at one point. Um, I can't fully remember, but it's rare that I take a break. So you normally get 50-ish episodes a year, obviously all for free. Um, And... I really enjoy doing it, but it is a lot of work, you know, on a lot of the days of the week, it takes up a lot of my time, on Sundays especially, after I've, you know, got the chat recorded and things, I have to then edit it, do the uh, description and things, do the intro, do the outro, um, write all the social media posts, do the artwork, because obviously, depending on where you listen, will depend if you get the artwork, that's different per episode or not, um, as well as, you know, on Instagram, and I make audio snippets as well, which are transcribed, so they've got the, uh, I use a service called Headliner, which is really, really good and it does most of the audio transcription but it's not always perfect so I have to go through and edit that so like every aspect of the show I do and it does just all add up and take time so I'm going on holiday I'm going to an all-inclusive hotel which I've never been to before I'm going to a five-star hotel so I've never been to a five-star hotel before except I think once when I was at four so that doesn't really count Um, and I've never been outside of Europe Uh, you know I've traveled around Europe I've been to you know Denmark Spain Portugal um, France you know the Canary Islands Uh, I went to Iceland obviously so I I've been to a few places, but I haven't been outside of Europe, so I've never actually been to America, even though a fair few of my guests are actually American guests. I've never been to America, and I've never been to South America, obviously, so I'm really excited to go to Mexico, um, but I won't be posting two episodes. So this is like a little sort of filler thing, in a sense, uh, just to kind of let anyone know who doesn't follow me on social media, that they'll know that I'm not releasing an episode for two weeks, and why. And if you enjoy the sound of my voice enough, then maybe this will <laughs> sort you out for a short period of time. I don't know how long it's going to be going. I'm trying to avoid looking at how long it's recording for. I'm just going to kind of try and blither and ramble, ramble and talk until I'm kind of done, really. Um, so this little pod, I, I was basically, it's a solo pod as this is the only one I've ever made without a guest. Um, I don't know if I will make any further without guests. I probably will if I hopefully will continue to do the podcast for years to come. I'm sure there will be a time where either um, there's some sort of scheduling error or something where I don't have a guest lined up or maybe there will be another circumstance like this happening. Um, I'm thinking about, I mean, I am thinking about going traveling next year, um, do like a road trip sort of thing, uh, which would be uh that would be like three or so weeks um so i'm not really sure what i'd do then i I may just do a thing while i sort of record on my phone just release it straight out almost like this kind of thing is um i haven't really thought that far ahead quite frankly uh because we're only just planning the sort of main steps of it but you know anyone who follows me on social media i mean twitter i occasionally post mini movie reviews um i post new episodes with their snippets and things and i do promote other people's stuff i like retweeting other podcasters work and whatnot um but i don't I don't put that much on Twitter. Uh, Facebook, I put the snippets of, you know, the audio snippets releasing when a new episode comes out. I put movie reviews and then I occasionally put other posts on there, but it's, it's fairly rare for me to put other posts. Um, and then I also use Instagram and Instagram's what I use the most because obviously Instagram stories is quite good if I'm just out for a meal or something or out playing mini golf, which is something I'm often doing. Um, I can just sort of record uh, like a little snippet or take a photo, post it on there. Don't have to really worry about it. Whereas obviously when I do a full Instagram post, I have to try and think about the hashtags and I generally quite try and write a decent-ish amount and things. Uh, but on, on Instagram, I also, you know, I do movie reviews as usual. I, I occasionally do uh, music recommendations on there. Um, I occasionally do other podcast recommendations. I um, put the audio snippets on there. I usually post two or three times per each episode being released. You know, normally it's like Sunday or Monday, Wednesday-ish, and then Friday or Saturday. I normally post the audio snippet twice. I normally do sort of a bit of artwork once as well um, with some of the episodes if there is sort of artwork thing going along with it like um, I don't know I did one a while ago where we were speaking about certain uh, animals that have become extinct and I put up a few photos of those animals it, those sort of examples but Instagram is generally where I, I kind of put the most effort in um, I do also put reviews of TV series and things up there as well um, so kind of bouncing off that I'm not going to just rant on and ramble about purely what i do in social media you guys all generally get the gist of that um but essentially um 
I saw The Lion King, the new one the other day. I finished The Good Place. I, um, I've i got a few other things to sort of talk about with things I enjoy. But before I go into that, I just want to say, yeah, this you won't be getting an episode on Sunday the 11th, which you normally would, and you won't be getting an episode on Sunday the 18th, which you normally would. Um, but on the 25th, um, I should be back as usual with sort of weekly episodes. Um, I have got the chat with Shadow recorded and I've got the chat with Callum of Placeholder recorded. Um, I'm leaning on rec- releasing the one with Callum from Placeholder before the one with Shadow because Shadow does have a new single coming out on August 16th called Burnout. But Placeholder have the new EP Despise Me coming out on the 16th. Um, so almost purely on the basis that that is about the EP, um, that the release is specifically is an EP, and also because our chat is mainly talking about sort of the EP. We do talk about a lot of other stuff as well, but that does come up quite a lot, whereas when I spoke with Shaldo, we just spoke about him in general a lot more. Um, we didn't specifically talk about the new track, Burnout, so you know it'd be good to kind of have that track out for a little while, and then I can obviously listen to it a bit more, and then once I release the episode, I'll probably talk about the track a little bit in the intro or the outro or something. But, um, you know, I've got those two chats sorted. They're both going to be two parters because they're quite nice long chats. Um, so that'll be that for the month. Um, I've got a few other in the pipeline. I've been chatting with a couple of other people. Some are podcasters, some are authors, some of this, some of that. So, you know, as usual, kind of like a mixed bag, see what things come out. Um, but that's all I can say for the moment for sort of future releases because as I often say I don't really want to jinx it I don't want to say oh I'm going to be chatting with this person and then you know it doesn't happen because it has happened once before um but yeah it's so I'm excited about all those things coming out Um, I will say as I said you know Shadow and Placeholder are both releasing things on the 16th of August um Shadow is a UK independent rapper um he's incredible I he doesn't necessarily sound like Tech Nine, but if you enjoy sort of alternative uh, hip hop artists or rap artists um, like you know Hopsin, Tech Nine, Chris Calico, those those sort of things, maybe even a bit Scroobius Pip. Um, he, he is more sort of aligned with grime, I'd say, uh, Shado, but I personally don't like grime music very much, but I really like what Shado does. His lyrics are very clever. Uh, his music sounds incredible. He's got an album called Way of the Shao, and the last track on that called Don't Box Me has got Chris Calico from, obviously, Tech Nine's mate and the Strange Music family. He features in that track, which is a really, really good track too. So I recommend anyone who likes rap and that sort of uh, type of music, check out Shado, S-H-A-O, W fuck S H A O D O W so it's shadow but with an O between the A and the D so shall S H A O D O W uh, he's on Spotify and YouTube and all that sort of stuff um, as the time of recording this his newest single is actually called Like Us I'll probably do an Instagram post about that shortly um, so that's really cool. Um, and obviously Burnout's coming out and he's got another two singles which is Dropkick Man and K.O. Ken uh, which came out I've come out since his album release Way of the Shower which I think was 2016 or 2017 I think that's when the album came out but I could be slightly wrong there um, with Placeholder um, you know they've got two singles out I built this house from nothing and um, I don't feel anything anymore um, I think slightly earlier on I said I don't need anything anymore I do really apologise for that I'm trying not to edit this one too much uh, but I already messed up yeah so it's uh, i built this house from nothing and i don't feel anything anymore um they've got an ep out coming out despise me on august 16th they've got another ep already out called the gray ep um three of the songs on that are on youtube they've got videos as well as the two new singles have got videos um i really recommend placeholder you know if you like heavier stuff metal that sort of thing they're really worth checking out if you're not as much into them and to sort of heavier stuff i'd recommend checking out their song relief which is uh, a lot more chill uh, and it's got a female vocalist in, uh, Christina Rotondo, I believe her name is. Uh, and also they've got some called Grey that is also a lot more chill. So, you know, both of those artists are great to check out. Um, I really recommend them both. I'll probably include links because I've been talking about both of them quite a lot. So I'll include links in the show notes and things. Um, you know, I also want to say that when I am away, I will hopefully be taking a few pictures of this, that and the other on my Instagram and Facebook and that sort of jazz as well. Um, I'm going, when I go to Mexico, for anyone who's interested, um, I'm going near Cancun. I don't know exactly where because uh, basically my girlfriend's uh family have paid for it which is really really great and i'm incredibly thankful for there's like five of us going to uh, this hotel um we're going on some excursions i'm going swimming with whale sharks which i'm petrified of which is great i really want to do it um you know i'm there's a lot of things i'm scared of i was terrified of skydiving and i did that a couple years 
two years ago now, I think. Um, so like a lot of things I'm scared of, I don't want my fears or anxieties to sort of overrun things that are like big life experiences for me. So I want to do like paragliding and things. I want to do, you know, obviously scuba diving and things. So I'm going swimming with whale sharks. I think we're swimming around like a coral, coral reef with sea turtles as well. Um, we are going to Chichen Itza, which is the, I think, as tech no i think it's mayan My, i think chichen is mayan i think um machu picchu is aztec uh or mayan aztec incan it might be incan i don't know i'm pretty certain that chichen is uh I'm, why am i even doing this like I'm, I'm actually arguing with myself on a podcast where there's no guests so there's absolutely no pressure and i'm just being a fool and just not looking it up and editing it out which i'm not gonna do i'm just gonna keep on talking until i don't know the moon explodes whatever um anyway the um it's actually mayan i just looked it up chichen it's uh, is um basically a mayan city pre-columbian uh, from the terminal classic period i'd be lying if i actually knew what some of those things meant obviously pre-columbian city means before essentially columbus went over there and you know decimated a lot of people living over there um but that's not something i'm going to talk about now because i can't frankly be bothered um yeah so that we're doing that and then we're also going to i think some markets uh we're going to some sort of market islands and things so hopefully get some cool handmade things over there um so you know i think it's like we're going on excursion one day, then chill at the hotel the next day. Excursion hotel, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to hopefully listen to quite a lot of podcasts. I'm going to hopefully read a lot of my Star Wars books because I've had the Aftermath trilogy for a long time and I haven't read any of them. I haven't even finished uh, From a Certain Point of View, which was the Star Wars book on the 40th anniversary of A New Hope, where each chapter is, for, well, basically each each part that happens in the film, there's, I think, 40 short stories, but each one is like the perspective of a character in a new hope that you wouldn't like see their perspective like one's like a jawa who finds um uh, r2d2 one is uh i think it's boba fett am i imagining that i I don't i can't really remember actually some of them but you know there's also one which is like qui-gon after he's died and then there's one of obi-wan as well before luke shows up and it's it's all these like sort of adding to the lore of um of of star wars which i always obviously love and anyone who listens to the show will know that i absolutely adore star wars and i can't wait for episode nine to come out um on the back end of that this is only a light preview because it may not happen for whatever reason, although I'm I'm pretty sure it will, and if it doesn't, then it, it's not a big deal. But um, I should be doing uh, an episode with another podcaster. I'm hoping it'll be Comics in Motion, um, where we kind of do sort of a... a talking about all the Star Wars films up to episode 9 and then also talk about our predictions for episode 9 and then hopefully we'll do an episode shortly after episode 9 comes out and do like a breakdown thing there. If that does happen I believe it will be on their channel as opposed to being on this one but you know if that does go ahead then on my on this channel you know I'll be sure to include links and talk about any intros and outros as I usually do. Um that's what's coming up then. So yeah I've gone to, I'm going to Mexico. I've spoken about Shadow and Placeholder. Um I've spoken about uh, future things of Star Wars because I can't seem to have a conversation with anyone without Star Wars being mentioned in some way. Um, I oh, I just recorded a, an episode uh, with Heather Vickery of The Brave Files. Um, she was on an earlier episode. I believe it was like 54 or something along those lines. Um, her podcast is great. It's very similar to this podcast. It's but the people are, are all like a lot more inspiring. Like I do have certain people who are on who are very inspiring, you know, like... A lot of the authors are quite inspiring, but also like, you know, Goff from Beer Nuts Productions, which is, you know, the blind filmmaker from Australia. Uh, he's very inspiring, you know. Um, there's quite a lot of people I have that I do deem as inspiring, but sort of The Brave Files is very specifically centred around that. Um, there's one gentleman who's on there from Uganda, and he basically sorts out um, people from the LGBTQ community to travel around Uganda. And I think Uganda is illegal to be gay, um, or it's... I think it's actually no longer illegal to be gay. I think it's actually just quite heavily frowned upon, I think. Or it's, it's along those lines, it's not accepted. It's not accepted anywhere near as much as it is in America and England uh, and a lot of the Western world. And even in a lot of the Western world, it's still not fully accepted. So you can imagine how much further back it is in certain other countries who who haven't just progressed socially enough with us to obviously understand that being LGBTQ plus is not really, you know, people can't really help that sort of thing. They can't help if they're gay or lesbian or bi or anything like that. But, you know, I'm not going to delve into the sort of issues of trans and that sort of thing because it gets a little bit too complicated and stuff. And I'm not trying to have a one-sided argument here uh, because, I, first of all, one side, like a one-person argument is just me essentially ranting about things and I kind of bounce off people a lot better and I like hearing other people's perspectives. So not going to delve too deep into that. Um, 
but yeah, uh, Heather Vicker of the Brave Files. I think um, I'll be the episode will be airing will be October in some point. Um, essentially, it will be about my dad. Which any of you who listen to the show, I, it does come up in conversation quite a lot for me because obviously it's a huge part of my life. Me losing my dad when I was nineteen um, to cancer. So that was obviously a, I call it almost like an anchor point of my life. So it was like a really big thing that happened to me that's completely changed my perspective, who I am, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, it comes up in conversation quite a lot because of me because it's such a big part of my life obviously and I think it's part of a coping mechanism that makes it easier to talk about and that sort of stuff as well um so obviously uh I spoke about it with Rob I think it was episode 24 it was around that mark it's called remembering dad it's a father's day uh, special and um yeah me and bro- my brother Rob talked for about an hour and a half or so about dad we, we spoke about you know if <sighs> what the good things were, what the bad things were, you know, we don't want to speak ill of the dead, we want to be honest, we give quite a balanced opinion of dad, of how he was great in a lot of ways, but also how he wasn't in a lot of ways, what we learned from him, in like what he taught us, but also what we learned from him, what not to do, uh, those sort of things. So that's a really good shout as well. If you want to go listen to that podcast, and you want to know a bit more, so I see a lot of these chats are just quite about the guest or about sort of general conversation, but my own personal life, that is, you know, quite deep into it. Um, and yeah, Heather Vickery is kind of... Uh, it, you don't have to have heard the one with um, Dad on it. It's not the, the one with me and Rob talking about Dad on it. You don't have to go back and listen to both of them. I'm not saying you have to. If if you've had a family member pass, it might be sort of helpful to you or to other people who've experienced that sort of thing. It may be helpful to kind of have a little kindred spirit have someone talking about to help guide you through it in some way um but obviously no pressure at all but if you if you've listened to one you don't want to listen to the other that's fine they both work independently but i'd say if, if you are really interested in my life then it's good to go check out that episode of um to kind of understanding who i am what kind of makes me work in a sense and then you know Heather Vickery's podcast is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favourite independent podcasts. Um, Than in the Black podcast, which I always suggest to everyone. I think there's two in the Black podcasts on uh, general podcast apps and things. It's it's called In the Black, and it's one where the logo is basically a, a cartoon drawn black gentleman pulling like a shirt open like Superman, and underneath it is an orange fist in the air, uh, orange fist in the air on his t-shirt, as in like it's a fist logo thing. You'll see it. It's fantastic. Um, I have posted about them before, so if you've got my Instagram and scroll down quite a bit, you will probably see the logo at some point. Um, but yeah, check out In The Black Podcast, it's amazing. Uh, but also check out The Brave Files, as I'll be guesting on there as well. As I said, it should be released in October, all about Dad, how I dealt with his death, how it changed me. You know, the one with Rob was me and Rob, two brothers, chatting about our dad passing. Whereas the one with Heather Vickery is her specifically asking me questions. So it's a bit more, maybe there's other questions people would want to ask me that they haven't, uh, they didn't get an answer to in that episode with Rob. So maybe they get answered in there. Um, But you know, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, um, or email me at genuinechitchat.com, at outlook.com uh, in the show notes i normally include links to all that sort of tomfoolery um you can always email me and ask me questions about anything if it's just like a minor question i'm almost always fine to answer it if it's a bigger question or something you want me to discuss i can always do another one of these or i can have one where you know i have a guest on like a friend a friend of mine and we kind of just bring up that chat that question you know I'm, I'm really happy to have a lot more sort of of you guys contacting me and speaking to me if you desire you know reviews on itunes are great as well posting on social media about this show is great as well um, i imagine if you're listening to this episode you're probably not a new listener i mean if you are hello and thank you very much you've probably chosen arguably the worst episode to listen to because me rambling like about nothing in particular but you know, as I, I was always saying, you know, if you do enjoy the show and you really like it, it would make mean the world to me if you just shared it with other people. Um, obviously, I don't have a Patreon page at the moment, so uh, I may do at some point in the future. It'll probably be a lot more things like this being released on there. Um, but I don't know. It's a lot of extra work. And at the moment, I can't quite balance that out. So, yeah, I don't have a Patreon. I don't have uh merch i don't really have anything you guys can just sort of just give me money for uh so instead of that you can give me your time by sharing the show uh, you don't have to if no one here shared the show as long as you guys are enjoying it i'd still be happy with that it just kind of you know helps out the podcast sharing with people you know even those who don't really listen to podcasts you know i say it quite often you know my back catalog is one of those things where there's so many different guests and such a wide variety of topics touched i would imagine that almost everyone who enjoys podcasts could find something that they find interesting and if you have a friend who you know would be interested in you know who's an author or who stuff is with epilepsy because i've had 
you know ones about uh podcasts about those two things people suffer with mental illness you know anxiety depression these sort of things i've had several chats about that i've had chats about losing weight with you know nutritionalists i've had chats with musicians i've had chats with um, all kinds of business owners all kinds of different people you know travelers it, it I try and have as many varied people on it as possible. And one of the favorite episodes, one of the most downloaded, is uh, the one I did with Bill M., a magister from the Church of Satan. Um, I really recommend people go check that one out. That was out, I want to say like 20 or so episodes ago. Um, That's a really good one because I reached out to the Church of Satan and said, you know, basically, would you guys want to come on a podcast? I'd like to talk to one of you about your religion because... Satanists uh, are actually just atheists that believe sort of a common philosophy, sort of ideology, which is like, don't be sh- shitty to each other, essentially. It, it's it's not, you know, worshipping actually Satan, you know, actually worshipping Satan, because they, they don't actually believe Satan exists. They, they don't believe in religion. They're atheists. So they use Satan as kind of like a... Uh, not quite a figurehead, but almost like a template in the sense of, you know, Satan was actually the one who like likes humans' flaws, who says humans are imperfect, that sort of thing. So they kind of use that in a way. They're not about ritual, like having loads of rituals where you sacrifice children or anything like that, or killing animals or any sexual abuse or even drug use or anything like that. Like you go on the website and you look into it and they are actually, you know, very, uh, seemingly very nice people and they don't have a lot of these sort of, all the controversy that seems to surround them is people who basically just lie about their religion. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. Bill M explains it much better in that chat. So the Church of Satan podcast is a big one that people really like. It's something that will change your mind most likely about perception or something. And that's kind of what I want to do with this podcast. You know, honest conversations with interesting people. I just kind of want to have conversations that I find interesting uh, and have conversations that other people can be interested and feel enlightened maybe change a few opinions on certain things in certain ways or just open the horizons of of ideas and thought you know um this show is is basically an excuse for me to talk to people that i find interesting but i really want other people to get into it because you know i don't say this very often because i try not to but you know if this could become a job somehow obviously it would probably have to be on patreon or something like that and i'd have to have 10 times the amount of listeners probably at least if I could do this as a job, then I'd be able to invest more time in it and I'd be able to likely release more episodes and things and I'd be able to have a more full sort of releasing schedule online and I potentially wouldn't even release things in part one and part two because, you know, my day job would be this so I'd be able to have a lot more time to record in the week. But, you know, at the moment, if I have a guest on and they come in, I chat with them for an hour or two on a Wednesday, on the Tuesday, so the day before, I normally have to spend one to three hours, depending on the guest, writing questions, researching about them, finding out information about them to make sure the conversation isn't too dry. Um, obviously, a lot of the guests, most of the time, it doesn't matter because they're really interesting people, but there are the odd times where the guest uh, needs a bit of, the conversation needs a bit of lubrication in, in a way. And obviously, me as a host, that's kind of, that's basically my job. It's to keep the conversation going, guide it, keep it interesting, that sort of thing. So I have to make sure I have enough things written down to be sure that I know the other person I'm speaking to enough, as well as being able to ask enough interesting questions and just doing it sort of ad lib at the time. Uh, there's certain questions that crop up that I wouldn't have thought of unless I delved a bit deeper in things. And I had um, a gentleman called. Uh, Tom King he was on this podcast a little while ago and he really liked our chat because I kind of went off the standard questions that most uh, podcasters he's spoken to ask him and I, I try to do that when I can but it does depend on the guests and how much information is out there and it depends because some guests I try and sort of ask other questions sort of dip my toes in other subject matter and understandably sometimes they don't want to go that far with it they just want to talk about their book or whatever it is they're kind of essentially trying to promote um, or they're not comfortable talking about things that they would deem as slightly more personal um, which is perfectly perfectly fine I just want to make sure you know the conversation is good for both parties involved obviously myself and the guest as well as the whole audience of you guys listening so you know I have to do the research on the day before I do the actual chat which say it's two hours it's still you know 15 minutes or so before the chat to actually get all my equipment ready and chat with the person before recording and then after the chat maybe chat with them for five ten minutes put all the equipment away um, I also you know on a Sunday I spend four hours or so um, writing recording or writing all the description and details and hashtags and recording the intro and outro editing the episodes to make sure it's clear and if I cough or anything in the middle or if anyone or either guest is too if the guest is too quiet or something or if I'm too loud or if there's a weird like if there's an awkward pause or two which does occasionally happen just 
normally because of latency uh, over Skype or Zoom or whatever. So if I kept that in, it would sound really awkward. When it's not, it, it's just latency. It's just lag, essentially. Um, so I have to do, I have to invest quite a few hours, not to mention my social media posts. You know, I try and post it on Instagram. I try every day. I very rarely succeed every day. So it's normally five four or five maybe six times a week um, as well as Facebook and Twitter and you know answering emails with guests and trying to organize guests coming on and speaking with other podcasters about swapping promos and collaborating and there's such a huge amount of things I have to do I want to redo my sort of Podbean website as well because it's just really basic and I want it to look a bit better but that's going to be a whole evening to set aside also you know other promo items and going on other people's shows and trying to do notes and researching about them. You know, I do like to collaborate. Obviously, I went on The Brave Files. I went on Comics in Motion that I mentioned, I think, earlier in this chat. Um, I've been on a couple of other podcasts, so I need to look up things for that and set time aside to do that. So it's just like, there's a lot of my time gets invested in this. And I don't have a Patreon page for people to give me money to or anything at the moment. So sharing the show and doing that, or writing an iTunes review, you don't have to write anything huge, you could just write what, one sentence and give me hopefully a five star review, um, just share my, if you have Twitter or Facebook, just go, oh this podcast is really cool, I've been listening to it, maybe people will enjoy it, you know, even if no one necessarily listens, just hearing the name of it, maybe further down the line, they'd, they'll see someone else post about the show and go, oh, I've heard about that show a while ago, maybe I'll check it out now, and you know, all these different things, it, it, it's just, you know, I'm just saying it takes me a lot of time to do these, I, I do it more f- for me, it's an enjoyable thing. But if this could be a job, that'd be fantastic. And the way, if it was a job, it means I could invest a lot more time in it. You guys would get more content and also you would get, you know, higher quality content. And if the, the obviously if the show gets bigger, more guests are more likely to come on, you know, bigger musicians, bigger authors, people who at the moment see the show and maybe they think, oh, it's only got a few, it only gets, you know, a few thousand listens and things. So maybe they'd go, oh, I don't, don't necessarily want to, be on that show because they think that their time you know two hours to chat with someone to promote to a few thousand people maybe isn't that much uh, which is fair enough you know i just i want to have the best content going and i want ideally probably not till like 10 years down the line to maybe do this as a career uh if i can but that may never be an avenue i can pursue it may be at some point i don't know it could just be a passion project forever and i'll be fine with that you know it's more just the sort of the ideal dream you know it's like i was talking about shout shadow is a rapper that's his actual job but like my mate callum a placeholder obviously he's in a band so there's five of them them trying to make it as a band where you can actually make money being in a band and have that as a career you have to be huge to do that and obviously that's what they're clearly striving for and that's what i hope they can achieve one day but it's kind of what all of us creatives want to do we don't want to do it for the money we want to do it because we're passionate about it and we love doing it but if we could get money for it it means that we could essentially bum off our nine to five standard jobs and then commit fully to this i mean i you know if i start if i suddenly was getting you know 10 times the amount of listeners or way way more and then people were you know speaking to me saying oh you should get patreon and things i'd pay for it or i'd uh, you know give you money each month to get a bit of extra content if i had that and i was making you know two thousand pounds a month then i would be it'd be something where I'd leaning on, maybe I can do this full time. But, you know, until that point, maybe even if it was only a thousand pounds, I could maybe make it work. But like, I I earn more than that now and I'm just about getting by. Um, Not like I'm skin or anything, but I'm like comfortable. I can afford the occasional tattoo. I can afford to go on holiday occasionally. I can afford food if I'm going for a meal or something. I don't have to worry too much about that at the start of the month. I just have to be wary of my finances. But it's like... You know, I'm not going to delve too deep into my personal finances. It's somewhere between one and two thousand a month, at the moment at least. Um, but it, it's, I, I want to make. I'd like to make money on the podcast. If I started even making like five hundred pound or something, it, then it would really help the show and it would motivate me a lot more uh, to put in more time and effort. I mean, I do put in a lot of time and effort anyway. But if I was getting actual money for it and things, I could invest. I could also invest in the podcast a bit more. I could maybe think, oh, there's a guest in. Liverpool that would won't uh, chat over Skype. They would only do it in person. Well, Liverpool's you know like a six to eight hour drive, I think. Um, so it's like if I was making money off this, I could be like, well, I get five hundred pounds from my Patreons or whomever. Maybe I'll just drive up there and you know get um, speak to that person because it's essentially worth X amount of money. Whereas at the moment, you know, if I drive up to Liverpool to chat with one guest, I mean, Liverpool is like a whole weekend thing me and my girlfriend would have to sort out. So, it, you know, I am going off on one about this sort of thing, but it's, 
I'm not saying you guys need to give me money or anything. Obviously, I don't even have a Patreon page, so I'm not even asking for it at the moment. I'm just saying with podcasters and with musicians and with any independent content creators, they have to put in a lot of effort and a lot of time and normally with either little or no payback, as in financially, um, which isn't the reason any of us do it or a lot of, isn't the reason a lot of us do it. But it's... It's a hard rope to walk, essentially. You know, I'm trying to balance my social life, my love life. Well, love life, my girlfriend. You know, I love her to pieces. I want to spend time with her. I want to balance my social life and seeing people. I want to go out and do stuff. I want to experience the world. I want to travel around England and Europe and all these other places. I want to get tattoos. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. And podcasting is one of them. But obviously, podcasting takes up, apart from my job, arguably the most amount of time. Uh, So sharing it in things with other people would be amazing and it would really help me out um i've been going on about this patreon thing for far too long and i do apologize for that if anyone is still listening hasn't tuned out by now then yeah sorry um i'll just quickly say a couple of other things i'll start to wrap up because i don't want this to be too much of a long rambly thing i'm not going to do intros outros or promos or anything like that so um what i was going to say is i saw the lion king the other day uh obviously i've seen aladdin dumbo and lion king now and what i say about all of them as i've posted in the movie reviews is i do really like them they are enjoyable you know they're fun but they don't get really high marks for me review wise because we know the plot for all of them basically so it's just like the same film but updated in a way i guess i mean the humor is a bit better i'd say in a lot of them the script is probably a bit better in a lot of them as well uh and obviously in certain of the older disney films there's a bit less political correctness i'd say I, obviously they've only remade jungle book dumbo well i suppose they've done beauty and the beast as well so they've actually done five to my knowledge at the moment but there's certain you know i think is it is it pocahontas or Oh no, it was Dumbo, the, the the sort of the crows. So everyone speaks about you know the, the racist crows in Dumbo. Um, so obviously they cut that out and they they've they've changed it up. Dumbo was probably the one they changed the most out of all of them. But I think I enjoyed the Jungle Book the most. But I think that's the one that I enjoyed the film the least before the the remake, as in the original film. Um, but essentially they are good and they're enjoyable. But it's like watching the Lion King. Like everyone knows the plot of the Lion King. It's basically Hamlet. But even if you don't know it's the plot of Hamlet, it, everyone knows the plot. So. When, unless you're like a really really young kid which you know is partly who this is aimed for but a lot of the time it's like oh we want to aim these new disney films for these young kids who maybe haven't seen you know they haven't got round to watching lion king because there's already you know 50 original disney movies or 200 if you include like all the side ones you know like oz the great and powerful and you know other films that are made by disney that are like not explicitly disney pixar or animated disney but they are disney movies still um made by disney studios there are so many disney movies out there and obviously there's uh dreamworks and uh, illumination I'm not, i think illumination is part of dreamworks but you know there's all these different you know, despicable me shrek all these things that come out and chances are a lot of the kids who are like you know eight nine ten maybe some of them haven't seen lion king as of yet so that obviously disney are like hey look at this new Lion King we've made. It looks incredible. It's visually stunning. It's got a lot of your favorite songs in there. You know, a lot of you've got nostalgia for it. Um, So it kind of works that every one of all ages would want to see it. But a lot of, most of us who who watch the new Lion King already know the whole plot. So the whole time you're watching it, you're like, I know exactly what happens. Like to probably 80 or 90% accuracy, I know what happens. Like specifically. Uh, And other little tiny details, maybe not as much. But, they are they are good movies but i just they they seem quite unnecessary and i'm obviously going to go see a lot of them because megan my girlfriend loves them uh and i got her to watch you know all the star wars films and stuff and she's going to start watching the marvel movies and things so i'm happy to watch these things because she's obviously happy to watch things with me but it, it just seems like disney are going to go through and just remake all the old movies and i i'd be lying if i was saying i'm not actually excited a bit for mulan and i am actually excited for hercules but I think Lion King, when it's like these animals, it's different because when you had like Aladdin, it had, it was still the same film generally, but they managed to change a bit. You know, the genie obviously was Will Smith and that was a bit different. And you had, you know, the the actors portraying certain roles do change them slightly and they have to update and change certain characters. I mean, even the hyenas in Lion King were a bit different and things. They have to make it less cartoony and less goofy and a bit more realistic. But the problem that I have with like Dumbo and Lion King is that, where all the main characters are CGI, like fully CGI, especially when they're not even human, it it becomes a lot more, oh, you're basically just doing, 
you're going from 2D animation to 3D animation. Whereas obviously with Aladdin, it was... Because the whole thing wasn't all computer-generated compared to the original, it did feel more different. And I felt that like Dumbo, the film, had a bit more plot than the original. But Lion King was the one where it had the most hype behind it, but it was, it was the least interesting for me of the new ones, you know? I mean, as I said, I, I briefly mentioned Jungle Book, and I really liked Jungle Book. Uh, I felt that was a really... That's probably my favourite of all the new ones. But they're still the same sort of plot. And I, a lot of people don't really want that, including myself. It's just like, why do I want to pay... 5, 10, 15 pounds to go to the cinema to watch basically just The Lion King that I know, but look better, I guess, with a couple of songs that are slightly better production quality. It's like, I'm in two minds about it. You know, they can do what they want, and at the end of the day, Disney just trying to make money, even me loving Star Wars and then bring Star Wars back. They're not doing it because me and the fans love it. Some people who work for Disney probably are, and a lot of the people who are in-depth in the projects, like the people who are creating these things, like some of the actors and the computer um the people who make the cgi and a lot of the wardrobe people and the directors and all these people involved are probably like really into it but obviously disney deciding to give the green light to go ahead and make a uh, you know the new Star Wars film they're doing it they're looking at it through a financial lens so one has to kind of keep that in mind when we think about all this media content we consume that we enjoy so much when it's actually a lot of it is because of money but lion king's good dumbo's good Jungle Book's great. Aladdin was good. It's just like, you can go watch them. You kind of know what to expect. It's kind of an easygoing, plodding along film. I did find Lion King to drag a little bit though, but yeah, it was still good. I also finished The Good Place the other day. It's on Netflix. Three series are out at the moment. I think the fourth series is out later this year. Uh, might be next year. It's Kristen Bell, who's from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Uh, she also appears in Parks and Rec a little bit from essentially, I think it's Leslie's counterpart in Eagleton. Um, Ted Danson's in it. Um, uh, I think the other actors I don't recognize quite as much. Uh, they're in other things. But Good Place, Series 1, 2, and 3. I really, really recommend people go check out The Good Place. Um, series 1 is amazing. And then Series 2 and 3, I think, are probably even better, which I was skeptical when I heard about the premise how several seasons would be better. But it is brilliant. It's basically... Um, a woman dies and it's basically what it is there's a good place and there's a bad place um and they kind of say generally speaking if you're a good person you go to the good place generally speaking if you're a bad person you go to the bad place and this woman uh she in season one she goes to the good place and she's basically a bad person and it's like a mistaken identity thing so it's her kind of trying to hide the fact that she's a bad person from all these good people and it goes from there and any further than that will ruin kind of a lot of the progression of what happens in it but it's it's a surprisingly deep show when it comes to morality and things it's very very clever uh and when you get to like finish series three like i have you go how did they get from there to there but it's it's kind of it's almost like breaking bad in the way that you hear the premise of breaking bad and you're like how on earth could they do six seasons of that and then you watch it and you go oh amazingly i see um obviously it's not like breaking bad because it's essentially kind of like a sitcom it's not but it's like a it's like a comedy uh in certain ways it's not like always laugh out loud funny but it's you feel connected to the characters it's kind of like with parks and rec uh, and those sort of shows where there are funny moments and it is a lot of the parts are to make you laugh but you get really invested in the characters and the plot and things and the good place is just incredible and i'm watching the office at the moment the us one because i watched parks and rec a while ago and everyone keeps saying if you like parks and rec you should watch the office because obviously the office the way they do things basically inspire parks and rec um so yeah i'm pretty much done now uh, i have been ranting on for almost 40 minutes in a room by myself which Anyone who knows me knew that would be possible, but I probably shouldn't have gone on for so long about fucking God knows what. But anyway, guys, I'm not going to do an outro or anything like that. Um, I may do... No, I think I'm not even going to do the genuine chit-chat uh, intro thing. So obviously, if you're listening to me saying this now, you will have already heard whether or not I've put that in because it would have been at the start. Um, but yeah, as I said, guys thanks for listening uh every week all the time uh and stuff i really hope you can all understand why i need you know a couple of time a little bit of time off just to kind of breathe and not worry about social media podcasting all that sort of jazz a little bit have some time to kind of switch off uh and if you enjoyed this sort of solo pod then let me know because like if you did really if you did enjoy this 
uh, even though it's a bit of a mess, I can potentially do some more of these in the future, maybe as bonus pods, or, or maybe I would start up a Patreon page and just say, you know, once a month or once every two weeks, I'll just chat and talk about things I've been doing. You know, so I, I do go to the cinema fairly regularly and see movies. I do watch a fair amount of series, quite a few music. So I could talk about podcasts I recommend and music and movies and TV shows and video games, anything like that, like little Patreon sort of things. I don't know. Um, but let me know. I can't, it's hard to gauge what people really enjoy without people telling me. Um, but obviously I can see by certain download numbers, which ones have people have got more interested in, but I try not to look at the numbers too much too often. Cause it, you know, you look at it constantly and it starts driving you mad. Oh my God, was one week I've got a hundred, but the other week I've got you know 400. Why have I dropped off all of a sudden? You know, a lot of people in podcast Facebook groups seem to worry about the numbers too much. So yeah. Anyway, thanks guys. I love you all. Please share, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm not going to be recording for two weeks. I'll talk to you after that. Follow me on Instagram to keep up to date with a lot of the things I'll be doing in Mexico, likely. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to end there. Oh, I need some breakfast because I've been, I haven't actually really eaten much today and I want to kind of chill out with Megan and stuff. So yeah, love you all. Talk to you in a couple of weeks.